very good evening to all of you. We welcome you all to M3 Spotlight event. That's Busy Mom. Myself, Divya Rathor. I'm the community manager at Me Myself Mom. So Me Myself Mom is a mom trainers network where work meets lifestyle. Here at M3, we share, support, and succeed. We believe in networking. That is the secret of success. M3 is a platform where aspirants meet mentors, ideas meet collaborations, founders meet funders, and work meets lifestyle. Today, we have two powerful mothers who have not only blazed trail in their professional career, but are amazingly leading a mompreneur's life. Let me first call upon Dr. Sunita. She is an IS ICF certified coach, wellness coach, spiritual heal healer, and also has two established brands, which I would like Dr. Sunita, I would request you to share a bit about your both brands and a professional career of yours. Thank you so much for introducing me to uh, this group, Devya. It is always lovely to come on the channel, your channel. And I always love listening to you. Let me acknowledge this here. And so. I really love the theme of your group, uh, you know, of our group, I should say that, you know, it is very important to acknowledge the contribution made by women in our life. Everybody should be able to acknowledge the kind of power, the kind of strength women bring in everybody's life self, their children, their family, corporate, professionals, kids, parents. Women play a very, very strengthening role. So, uh, you know, since beginning of my career, I was 20 when I started my journey. And it has been 22 years that the journey is continuing. Uh, initially, I worked for 22 years in education industry, recruitments, training, placements, grooming kids, making them corporate fit, for the jobs and the, you know, the urge for developing leaders from within was always there in my mind throughout this journey because I used to give special attention to those kids who used to have potential, but they never used to crack anything in the initial stages. So there the idea of leaders in making was born and at platform leaders in making, it's a national level platform I personally feel that a child's career is a combination of parenting and teaching, mentorship. So that is why since beginning, I'm also working on parenting, parenting coaching. I feel that child has two pillars in his life. And those two pillars are the leaders, that is parents and teachers. So Leaders in Making is a platform which is giving parent coaching, counseling, student counseling, corporate counseling, corporate coaching and we are giving trainings to people who wanted to make their career in corporate as well and we also are into school and institutional alliances and leaders in making is a national content partner for a company called internshala we are contributing in lot many events of theirs in their trainings as well we are contributing on india parenting as well for parenting skills and the other brand is delhi tarot very close to my heart. It deals with personal and professional life of people. And we have two channels. Uh, we have two websites, leadersinmaking.com, delitarot.com. And my personal website is drsunitatank.com. It talks about both the visions. Now, in Delhi Tarot, we believe that, yes, there is an art, there is divine, there is universe. But karma plays the main role in making your destiny. Even if you have very strong deeds in the past, your karma can make your life good or bad. So whatever has happened has happened, but we spiritually guide people to keep on improving their thoughts, not only for others, but for self. And the action should be based on the thoughts which are not harmful for anybody in this life. And the philosophy of being successful spiritually at any point of time in life is being karma oriented and that's the theme of Delhi Tarot. Delhi Tarot is an international website. We have engagements from approximately 33 countries. We do a lot of different type of readings and people do enjoy readings. And yes, we do teach tarot courses. We do teach healing courses and both the brands, Leaders in Making and Delhi Tarot are legally registered trademarks for us. Thank you so much. 
Great. Thank you so much for sharing this. So both of your brands are totally into different domain. And I'm glad yeah. that you are into tarot because that is one of my <laughs> favorite piece also. Though I've never, yeah. you know, discovered much about it. But surely your journey will, you know, explore more. Sure. So I would like to, uh, you know, ask you that uh, since you have these two brands. So since our topic is today that, you know, be the change to see the change. So how have you uh, experienced this with your professional career, building these two brands? See, when you see the change, it is important that the change has to start from within. You should have the need to change others, the situation. But before that, it is a mandate that you need to change yourself. So, you know, it's difficult to change even ourselves at you know, at some point of time, and it's not easy because, you know, it's a proven philosophy. It's a proven scientific uh, theory that you cannot change any person more than 5%, 95%, any theory you use, you cannot change a person. So I personally work on the theme of forgiveness and forgiving. So when you work on the field of forgiving and keep on doing your work, then the change begins. And yes, in order to bring change, what I personally feel and practice is that you need to nurture your own wisdom. Your own wisdom should have a bandwidth to understand the personality of others, the behaviors of others. You should have space to adjust with what they are offering to you. And under what circumstances, under what understanding, under what upbringing they are bringing this change to you. So when you say that you need to change the world, you should have that wisdom within you to change yourself first. So I always work on expanding my wisdom that if the person is doing like that, what could be the reason? Let me mold myself accordingly. So there is not even a single moment when we are not changing. Every moment, every second, the more you want to work in any field I'm talking about, the more you should be flexible for a change yourself every moment. So when every moment you are ready to change, the situation, the circumstances, the people will definitely change for you. So that's the change from within. Definitely. So I would say that, you know, to sum it up what you have said, uh, no strings attached to your past, you know, deeds or anything. Just yeah. keep moving, forgiving and, you know, forgetting. And it is very difficult because sometimes change takes a day, sometimes change takes months, sometimes years, sometimes even a lifetime. True. Sometimes you work for an organization for 15, 20 years. It takes years to leave that organization and move forward. But change is needed. Time will never stop for you. You have to move as per time. So when one door closes, I was, I was making a note yesterday for my blog. And I would definitely like to introduce, give it to my audience here. No door is closed in destiny because when the door gets closed, it says that the other door is open. Just have a look 360 degree. And there are adjacent possibilities. So no door is closed. It gives a message that the other doors are open. So keep yeah. your vision wide, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing this. And I'm sure that, you know, this is going to help because change is again a consistent process. You know, you can't stop or you can't rely on just one thing that you have done and you'll say that, you know, now I've changed or something. So glad that you shared. So my next question to you, I'd like to ask that, can you share a few examples uh, of your business success stories where you, you and your work has transformed the life of someone, or, you know, basically just success stories that you have come across? Divya, in 22 years of work, there has been thousands of such stories. You know, when I was placing students, there were many students who were not able to perform at the level of interview. They were really nervous, not able to talk about their family background. So I used to sit with those students to understand that where is the root cause. And believe me, very good students who were not able to perform in the interview they really have some childhood memories, bitter ones. So I used to sit with them. I used to nurture them. I used to guide, I used to guide them. And the success lies in the fact that till the time they never used to get a job, I was keep on sending them for interviews, interviews, interviews. 
I still remember I have in my journey, I have placed thousands of students and there were hundreds of students who used to sit for 10 to 20 interviews and finally they used to get a job. And that is a change for me and change for them because I have impacted so many lives. God has made me the medium of giving you know, livelihood to thousands of students in these 22 years. I think I was 20 when I started placing students above my age. And maybe I was born to give jobs to people at that time. I don't enjoy doing that more because I think I have already done it for so many years. And if you talk about my tarot, you know, what I believe in success story is making somebody fearless about future. People today are fearful about what will happen tomorrow. So when you make somebody fearless that what has happened, what is going to happen tomorrow is in, or in your own hands. You believe in yourself, you trust on yourself. There were not many cases who used to be very fearful of some relationships, very fearful of losing a job, very fearful of losing a country. Because if you talk about UAE countries, there are many countries, if you don't have a job for one month or so, you are not allowed to stay in a country. And there were few people in my life in this tarot journey who were very fearful about some of their relationship. So after spiritual coaching, after doing their healings, after doing their readings, now when they are living life fearlessly, and when they say that the frequency of getting fearful have reduced tremendously, and when they say that now they are enjoying the relationships and life, I think I'm very, very glad that I'm the medium for for them when they are living free life full of wisdom and happiness. So there are many cases. That's so true that, yeah. you know, many a times it happens that we change a thing, but when you change a person and you contribute to their life, you know, yes. towards success, it means a lot. So I'm glad that you have thousands of such stories. And yeah. That's making me curious, you know, to say that, how is the experience? I mean, you might have come across so many Different, so many different people. personalities, you know, some change might be hard, some may be, you know, easygoing. And definitely when you're, uh, you know, interacting with a person or, you know, trying to change a person, it affects you as well. So just curious to know how was the experience? No, that's a brilliant question. Yes. Many times it happens when you contribute to a child's growth, especially when you really help them in clearing certain processes. You know, when I used to see a child is not performing well, I used to give extra attention, care to the child. And you will not believe our youth has a very, very big attitude problem. Once they get something from you, maybe in a form of an offer letter or a job, they will not even come back to you saying, you know, a gratitude. Maybe you went through the process, you got it. The mentor sat with you for so many, you know, hours. And I used to uh, you know, since beginning, I was very, very curious to know that why the child is not performing. And I used to go deep down to the root cause of, you know, anything related to personality, anything related to upbringing, the parents' attitude, anything related to classmates, peers. And yes, it was many times it has happened that when you're, when you groom students, when you place them, and when you touch base with them after a few months and few years, and many times they, they really sometimes behave as if they are very, very high professionals. So what I do is I wait for an opportunity for them to come back. And then I tell them, yeah, the world is small and I really appreciate you coming back. However, you know, I thought that you were occupied. So how was your time? And then they realize that they have also gone through ups and downs. But believe me, such cases, such cases takes time in improvement. You cannot change the basic nature of people. So again, in that case, you have to work upon on your own expectations. When you groom a child, you don't know the child, how he's going to or she's going to behave after a few years. When you place them, when you support them mentally, emotionally, but yes, when you understand that this is the world, how they are behaving, then you again expand your horizons. And when they come back, you give them in a form of a calculated manner, not in the way you contributed initially. 
So this is the way I change my equation of giving. Lovely. You have just reminded me of, uh, you know, memory from my personal life since you said that, you know, sometimes you lose contact of those students where you have put in so much of hard work. And same happens with, I guess, uh, mother-daughter relation, you know, children's and mother's relation is also such where they put so much of effort, you know, in uh, making you grow into the person you are today. And many a times the children forget to, you know, give back that. So I think yeah. the root cause is parenting. Because when you see till 12th class across India region, parents go with students. And when, the, when you are accompanying your child to the school, because till 12th class, you have to go to the school to take the result. I think the parents has to be very, very cautious that time. That is your child giving regard to all the teachers available there who were in touch with your child, maybe this year or previous year. Do parents do, you know, recognize the effort? My answer to this is no. So whenever you are accompanying your kid to any school activity, ensure your child is giving regard to each and every teacher who generally passes by, who generally come across, who has contributed to your child's life, maybe in any standard. If you are allowing and nurturing your child to get connected with all his old bonds, I'm sure he's going to contribute the same uh, you know, feature in the life to come because then he will remember the parenting that my parents used to guide me that at least wish your teachers. We generally say, oh, now you are in class 10th or 12th, they were in class 2nd, 3rd, 4th, nothing doing. We just cross the stairs and go. Even if the faculty is coming in front of you, the teacher is coming in front of you, it is, I think it is appreciated on parents' part if they guide or nurture their child to at least give regard to the teachers surrounding and they're coming in contact with. You should always remember people who have contributed to your life. And I think parenting is a most important aspect here to make children learn that. And that really shows up. You know, in, in my journey, people who are still calling me, you will not believe there are hundreds of students who call up and say, ma'am, where are you? We would like to meet you. That's their upbringing. Because they were with me for two to three years, but that's their upbringing. On every occasion, New Year, Guru Purnima, teachers, they, they send a message to you, they send a call to you. That is upbringing. Though you have definitely contributed, that is why they are remembering you. But students who are giving so much of values, love and affection to their mentors, to the people who made their life in terms of small contributions. So that is parenting and upbringing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all that small, small, you know, habits and gratitude we show that counts. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing this and you placed it in the most simple and storytelling method yeah. for the viewers. I'm sure that, you know, they would, they can relate easily, you know, to whatever we actually want to convey the message that is be the change to see the change. I request all my friends here to take everything lightly because whatever is supposed to happen will happen. But we, the women always try to bother our mind, soul and body till abusive level. We take it all, everything on our mind and heart so much that we end up, uh, you know, losing the strength and health of our body. So try to take everything lightly. Understand that everything happens for its own good, on its own divine timing. And yes, it is important that nurturing, handling family is important, but not at the cost of your health mental, social, emotional, physical, and uh, emotional health. So try to take everything lightly and only react in a situation wherein it is, it is really required. Otherwise, be mild on responding. And I think things will definitely take the shape which is supposed to be. So true. We should just, you know, lose the air. <laughs> yeah. Please. Let the things happen. The more we try to control... The more we try to control, we have to surrender the need to feel in power and we have to surrender the need to control. So when we are in the need to show power to everything, family members, people outside working with us, and we have a need to control the decision, the making decision making powers of others, family, friends, peers, professional people, we tend up ending our health. So the moment we release that power, 
the moment we release that control of controlling others their actions their their body language the way they think the way they speak you know we keep on ourselves on toes of our own performance and when we are always performing always performing where is the rest and rejuvenate <laughs> so that's important rest rejuvenate surrender the power of you know making powerful yourself or controlling others and let the things go in a natural flow and be very very cautious of your health because i think in changing time today health is very important to achieve anything in your life if you want to see your kids growing if you want to see your happy family you need health to enjoy that so for me mental physical health is utmost important at this point of time and i would really like to suggest this to my friends out here so there is a very very relevant management plan have your priority list always in your hand and in that priority list have three to four things which changes your mood instantly if you like shopping you put it there if you like taking a bath you put it there if you like talking women do like talking and sharing you can put it there or you can plan a cooking or you can plan a activity with your child any other activity have a list of four to five things in your mind which you feel that yes if you are not happy with something has happened you will immediately shift to something which will give you happiness and pleasure when you will do this activity multiple number of times you will identify and you will see because i have practiced this myself apart from being a spiritual healer and a chakra healer angelic healer myself when you do these things when you have the other activity lined up already which you enjoy you know your body you know your mind that what you like have three to four things always in the mind 24 by 7 that in case i don't like anything or my mood is upset i will go out for shopping i will speak to my four or five friends i will do a cooking i will sleep or i will play with my kid or i will have my wardrobe ready again you will see that the frequency of getting upset the frequency the time duration of being into that upset mood reduces and try this out for 3 to 6 months you will see a major time reduction in your mood sadness and depression and you will feel that earlier it was used to be one day two three days now it has reduced to half day then to few hours then to few minutes and then couple of seconds because you are next to another activity so true it's a habit that we have to inhabit it and continue practicing and i have practiced this myself apart from you know because i do i shared earlier that i do lot of healings lot of therapies for people but as a healer also you get exhausted by giving your energies all the time and when you are doing your work continuously for so many days you feel like oh hold we have to put stop to it now so next you have to do something which you enjoy <laughs> yeah apart from work yeah sure, sure thank you so much for sharing i'm sure that this is going to help because i've read somewhere that you know any habit that you take upon you need to practice is for 21 days and it works like i don't know whether it's true or not it depends initially you have to make it a habit but otherwise when you are used to it it is just instant okay great because i have few habits that i need to impact if, so, if you are if you are feeling <laughs> bad about something have two three friends ready in your hand try this out this time talk to friend number 1 same issue same issue same day second friend same issue th- yeah. same issue same day third friend by the time you reach just the third friend you will be absolutely in a good mood you have, you have made everything out of your heart now you are normal this definitely have those confidential two three friends and then go out for shopping or eating and then sleep <laughs>